Hello, everybody. Welcome to Late Night Football. Welcome to our match reaction show. And uh, we're doing the preseason match reaction. It's finished. Uh, Rosenborg won Manchester United nil in preseason. The first game of preseason for Manchester United. Officially, the first game of uh, of a new season, so to speak, for a lot of clubs. So um, that that's what we're doing today. I think. You know, uh, caveat, this is a cliche, but we talk about this all the time. The results don't matter in preseason, and that I think is true. I don't think the results matter. What matters are the performances. So no matter whether you play really badly and you end up, in, you know, whether you win 1-0, whether you lose 1-0, whether you win 4-0, one, you know, whatever score line you want to pick, it's not important. What is, what is important is to look at the performances and the nuances within those performances that actually make a difference, I think, overall. So, um. Having said that, I think this is a game where I don't think you can be too um harsh as as a United fan. It was a very boring game, by the way. I mean, it was absolutely boring to watch. Um, you know, because you could clearly see the players are not fit. Some of the players, I think, you know, have not done a lot of fitness training, which is understandable because probably some of them have had longer holidays. Um, also many of the players that played, I think, yeah, they're younger players, so they're probably not used to you know this kind of intensity of training as well. So it's a lot of factors. So having said, you've got to take all of that into context. Um, you know, it was a game that could have finished 4 0, 5 0 to Rosenberg. Actually, it could have been, it could have finished like it. Rosenberg, you know, really uh, will be disappointed maybe in a way that they only won 1 0. They'll be happy that they won because I think that's what they deserve from that game. They deserve to win that game and they really should have won that game, but they should have won it much, much more comfortably. And it was only because of Radek Videk, uh, the goals keeper for Manchester United, who, you know, made sure that they only considered one goal in the end. It was a bit of a fortuitous goal as well, uh, you know, because the ball kind of pin pin ball in the, in the in the penalty area where, you know, it's a shot that comes, gets blocked by their own player, then it hits another United defender, comes back to um, the, the striker, and then he finally manages to get a shot away, that is, and he's at point-blank range, so he's able to score because, you know, that's like any kind of connection, as long as it's on target, it's going in because it's from point-blank range. Um, you know, maybe for the farther out, maybe they would have found a way to miss that as well. But uh, that being said, I think you know they deserve to win the game, and so it was not. I'm not going to say it was a good goal, it was a fortuitous goal, but it's a good result from from a Rosenborg perspective. From Manchester United's perspective, I think like one of the things, the the main thing that I will say that stood out for me is the fact that aside from Radek Vitek, who will not play a lot this season if at all, um, now the play, none of the other players stood out. Nobody stood out, and and you know, and and and. Most of these players will not be playing any games for Manchester United. The players that I think the twenty twenty two players have played today, they're not. Most of them are not going to play a single game uh, for United. Uh, you know, once once the four season starts, a few of them will probably um, play. Um, and I I don't think any of them are going to be you know sort of first choice starters for United. Maybe Rashford will be a first choice player for for, for Manchester United. But I, I I feel like this is a big season for Marcus Rashford. I feel this is the season where. You know, either we will see him, you know, cement do do whatever what he does always, which is you know score another 25, 30 goal season. But if he doesn't have one of those monster seasons that he seems to have every other season, I can see him being phased out and basically becoming a super sub, a sub player, and then eventually leaving. I can see that happening, and I think based on today's game, it's only one game. It's the first game of the season. You can't really put any conclusions. But if I were to make a conclusion, I would say it looks more and more likely that it's, he's going to be phased out. Because I didn't see a lot. There was that one moment where he netmegged the player. But then anyway, he lost the ball right after that. So it wasn't like some big, you know, uh, player or whatever. Aside from that, he just looked totally rusty. And the whole team looked rusty. Uh, that's a fact. But um, he looked rusty as well. I think most of the, you know, and and but what again, as I was going back to the point, I was saying that, Having said that, that you know that he's that you know that there are so many of these players who are not going to play a lot of games for Manchester United. The fact is nobody really stood up and said, no, you know what, I can't play for Manchester United. I can't play a lot of games for Manchester United. I should be playing a lot of games. Nobody stood out for me, and that I think is the biggest takeaway from that. And that's why the biggest disappointment that Ten Hag will have as a manager, and that the players will have from the result is the fact that none of them really look like you know what we're ready today. That step up and you know become first team players. So a lot of these players will need to go out on loan. Um, I think uh, Wheatley will need to go out on loan. I think he's is a prospect, but I think he's still you know he might he might very well come into that category. A few players do come into that category. You know often is where they're too good for the under 18s. They're probably you know just about right for the under 21s, but they're not yet ready for Manchester United first team. So for me, I think he needs to go out on loan for sure. I think Ethan Williams needs to go out on loan as well. Um, he looked good. Ethan Ennis looked good as well. I think another an alone move would benefit him. Same for Joe Hugill, probably needs a loan as well. Most of them probably should go to the championship. Maybe Wheatley could go to League One, maybe, but I think you know many of them should try to look for championship loans. Um, you know, and uh, and again, this this said Will Fish looked good, but I don't think he looked good enough for me to be able to say that he should be starting more games. Same could be said for Toby Collier. A lot of you know hype around him as well. 
didn't look like someone who's ready for a starting role. Again, this is first game of preseason. So that many of them are young players. So I think maybe the next game against the Rangers will probably give a better idea. Um, but just look, nobody really looked like they were, you know, like ready for 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 this. Um, and that's that's a little bit sad to see. But again, it's only one game. Maybe the Rangers game will tell us more. Um, what I think is clear is that someone like Hannibal Mabry is is done uh, at Manchester United. I don't think he's going to be playing uh, much games this season for United. He should be going. He should be getting a permanent transfer because he doesn't look like he's anywhere near. Uh, the level that is needed. Uh, Casemiro looked off the pace as well. Um, again, you know, someone who's probably going to leave and hopefully he leaves soon as well for the sake of his own career because he doesn't look like he belongs at this level. Mason Mount, they said he looked okay. Um, a lot of people said he did okay. For me, I think he was fine. But again, not someone who really... If he's playing in that position, but he was playing in the position where Menu is supposed to be playing. So I don't think he's going to start over Menu. So it's a little bit interesting why he played there unless the, the plan is to play a midfield three of Menu, Bruno and, and Mount, which is a total disaster waiting to happen. Um, but he, he looked a little bit off. Uh, you know, he looked okay, but the position he's playing was very interesting for me is because is that going to be his role as a backup to Bruno and Menu this season? I think that, that would be very, very interesting. That is the plan. But uh, we'll see what happens. Um, and otherwise, you know, it was, I mean, Radek Videk, man of the match for Manchester United, played really well. Probably man of the match, um, you could say, you could argue that he was man of the match because he was the only one who played 90 minutes and really looked good. Um, a lot of the Rosinbo players had a lot of, gra you know, they had a lot of graphs, some of them showed a bit of graph, but in the tight moments, none of them really made it count. And the goal wasn't exactly like some, you know, world class goal. So for me, I think Radek Videk was man of the match um, throughout the game. Definitely man of the match for Manchester United. Um, I don't think there's any arguments on that. Um, and the one player I think that I do want to mention is Harry Amas. Um, Harry Amas, I got to talk about him because again, there's a lot of hype around Harry Amas as well to be the next, you know, guy of the rank, so to speak. And obviously, with Shaw's injury problems, with Malasia's injury problems, there is a spot at left back that is up for grabs, and a lot of people think that maybe Amas could take it. Now, again, one game can't draw too many conclusions, but from that one game, this game. He seemed to me to be pretty average. In this game, he seemed pretty average. I'm not saying he's an average player. What I'm saying is in that game, he looked very average. He didn't look like the kind of guy um, who's, you know, who's ready for that first team. A bit like Alvaro Fernandez from last season, where again, people were like hyping up saying, oh, this guy is great, this guy is great. And yet, you know, now he's not even at United anymore. It seems a little bit the same way with Amas. Now that could change. Um, sometimes you get to see players. Like when I saw men who play first, uh, for the first time last season in preseason, I was like, this guy's ready. This guy's ready. He's ready for first team. He's ready. You know, even though it was preseason, I could say this guy is ready. Um, and right from the first game, you could say that about him. But I must have not, I was not able to say that. I'm not able to say that. Now that may change in the next two or three games. But for now, in this particular game, looking at it, I was like, nah, this guy's not ready. He's not ready yet. Um, and particularly disappointing is the fact that he was playing with, you know, some of his under 18s, under 21 colleagues. So he's got to have that understanding already with those players. It's not like he's playing, you know, with, with players that he has no idea, you know, what runs they're making or that kind of stuff. He was misplacing a lot of passes as well. Um, maybe fitness is an issue. That's something we got to look at as well. But um, overall, I, I, was, I wasn't impressed with him the way that I thought I should be. And maybe that will change the next two, three games. It might just become, you know, something else. But that game was disappointing. And like I said, disappointing part is that nobody really stepped up and nobody really looked like they wanted that starting spot. They wanted that first team spot. It was almost everybody was just going through the motions. Um, and that's not what you want to see from young players, especially. That is not what you want to see in a preseason game. You want to see them hungry and fighting and wanting uh, to grab, you know, by the scruff, scruff of the neck and wanting to, you know, make a name for themselves. And these are the games where you get the opportunity to do that. You don't get to do that anywhere, anywhere else in the season. This is the time to do it because you're playing in front of the manager. You're playing alongside, you know, first team colleagues who can, and you want to impress them. But uh, anyway, nonetheless, um, not going to be too harsh on anyone. I, I'm, I don't want to go in on anyone. And I'm not going in on anyone. I don't think I am. I'm just, you know, mentioning facts. And I, you know, fully sympathize with the fact that it's the first game of the season, pre uh, you know, the preseason. It's a long road ahead. A lot of these players are probably rusty. Many of them haven't had much fitness training. You know, probably many of them aren't used to the kind of level of first team training as well. So, Lots of factors. So I'm not going in on anyone, just that it was a bit disappointing. And the result is fine. The result is what it is. I think the performances were a bit disappointing. I think it's it's fair to point that out um, in the context of the game. So anyway, um, let's see what happens next. I think um, will be interesting. The next game against Rangers, I think, will tell us a lot. And the one the, the thing that is now interesting for me, and, and share your comments on this, because I'm actually very intrigued by this. In 25 days, United are going to play Manchester City. That's, say, about three and a half weeks from now. Um, You know, give or take. Uh, and um, or maybe just a shade under four weeks, you could say they've got to play Manchester City. You're assuming in a, in a month's time from now, they'll be playing the first league game of the season. 
how much off time are the players in the Euros going to get? The English players, you know, the likes of Bruno, the likes of Menu. Um, you know, you've got Shaw, you've got uh, Xerxes, of course, who was there. Um, probably some others as well. I mean, you know, that that were there and that uh, Rasmus Hoyland, for example. How soon are those players going to start to come back? Would be interesting to see. I mean, sure, some players will come back quicker than others. But those that were in the knockoff stages, will they only have one week or two or one week or two weeks of preseason? They probably only have one week of preseason before they go for that community shield game against City, and then they've got that game against uh, uh, you know Fulham uh, in the Premier League. So it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to see how many players come back and how soon they come back and what the fitness levels will be. And I'm sure that's going to be a problem for all clubs. Um, you know whether that's Arsenal, Manchester City, but I'm interested to see what happens there. So. Um, that's one of the drawbacks, I think, of having, you know, these so many games and so many tournaments and so much football is that I don't think footballers don't even get a break. We don't get a break. I mean, yesterday was the European Championships final. What a wonderful way to end the season. And then today's free season. So, um, yeah, I feel for the footballers. But that would be that would be one thing to keep an eye on is how many how many starting players actually come back in time for that Community Shield game for Manchester United and for Manchester City. I'm, I'll be intrigued to see that um, for sure. But anyway, share your thoughts on the game. Um, what did you think about the performances? You know, um, what did you think about the result? Maybe um, not a hug out here. I mean, like that. Like, anybody who's thinking that at this point is just kind of crazy. That's not happening. You know, you don't get sacked for a preseason game. At least not at Manchester United. So I don't think that's going to happen. But it is interesting to see how things evolve. So share your thoughts. Smash like on this video if you enjoyed it. Uh, do subscribe to our channel. And um, thank you so much for watching. We'll uh, see you again soon. Take care. Bye bye.